Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my reaction channel. My name is Teddy Knighty and today we're going to be reacting to the sneaky plan to subvert the Electoral College for the next election by CBG Grey. It's another CBG Grey video. I love him. I'm a Hello Internet fan. I'm a Tim, as you will. So let's go ahead and watch this. Uh, if you like CBG Grey, I can't speak today, CPG Grey, go like his video, go subscribe to him. He's a fantastic content creator. Go watch Hello Internet and all that other good stuff. He, he deserves all the love and happiness in the world. I'm just... Some guy reacting to it. Um, apart from that, yeah, there was no ad that ran that ran in front of this video when I loaded it up. There wasn't any ads, so I'm assuming there's going to be one at the end, and we'll watch that. But apart from that, let's jump on into it. Hey, oh, want to oh, play some mind. video they games? Do an I ad know now. I do. I haven't okay. seen the sun in years. Weird. So let's uh, play we're not going to listen to a two-minute ad. It should. That's it's not going to happen. And it's f the electoral okay, we'll just jump in. I was not going to sit there for a two two-minute ad. That that's not that, that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> All right, now we can jump in. The Electoral College, America's unique way of picking her president. For it or against it, you might want to know there's a plan to use the Electoral College to subvert the Electoral College. It's a sneaky plan and to understand, remember that while it feels like citizens pick the president in one big election, they don't. The 50 states pick the president. Oh, and District of Columbia. But not you, Puerto Rico. Come back when you're a state. The Electoral College was a useful invention back when communication was a lot harder. Well, useful as a term, it 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 was a it was a needed thing because on the one hand, the United States, even at its foundation, was a big country. It was a big and long country with the thirteen colonies and all their other uh, subsequent things to the west, the Ohio Valley, and all those other things. Um, so it was hard with just pure and utter lack of communication. So electoral college giving different people different representatives that then represent was a much better system than trying to do direct democracy or trying to do other things like that because it was which is an easier way to work it back in the day when things were harder to communicate but it's it's definitely not helpful now it was helpful then but it's not helpful now but there's there's this tendency among Americans, I've noticed, that seem to cling unendingly, unendingly to tradition. But that's not... I suppose that's wrong, though, isn't it? That's not necessarily an American thing. That's just kind of a human thing. You can see that with the English, with their different, like, weird things that they do with judicial systems and their... <laughs> or even look at their own um, political system, where some of them still wear wigs and things like that. It Traditions are hard to let go of and since america is such i suppose such a young country it holds tightly to the few things that it has as a tradition so it holds tightly to the founding document even if the founding document was created underneath the pretense that it was supposed to be changed and adapted over time but people have a tendency to forget about the fact that that was part of the reason why they made it they they didn't make it to be this is forever and this is unchanging they made it to be adaptable and change and the electoral college was definitely something that if they would have known the difficulties coming up ahead they would have probably tried to come up with a better system but it i don't know it people stick to tradition like nothing else and i don't particularly blame people but the electoral college isn't particularly helpful, and it it is it is good to realize that not all traditions, just because it's a thing, is something that you should keep forever and ever. But all right, let's let the video run. Sorry, I got a bit rambly. How the states come together and how they vote is what the electoral college is. Each state gets votes proportional to her population plus two, and is free to cast these votes however she wants. Most look at how their citizens voted and give all their electoral college votes to the statewide winner, but they don't have to. A couple states cast their votes proportional-ish to their citizens' preferences, but states are free to vote however, including against the preferences of their citizens. Let's mm -hmm. make a note of that. But back to this plus two, which is why some citizens really don't like the electoral college. The plus two means <laughs> on a the states less populous produce preponderant presidential picking power per person. Yeah, that was actually intended to give more rural populations more representation just so that they wouldn't feel alienated. 
because big cities do have a tendency, even though that is where the vast majority of the population is, big population centers have a tendency to have no conceivable way to understand what rural life is like. Even if I disagree with the politics of either the city folk or the rural folk, it doesn't particularly matter. Rural folk have no idea what's going on in the city. They, they, can't, they can't and they shouldn't be able to make policies for city folk. And city folk have no idea what's going on in the country. They just straight up don't. Uh, that's not an insult to anyone's intelligence or anything like that. It's it's just where you grow up and things like that. It's it's hard to understand what's going on. The Electoral College was a good... The Electoral College at the time was used to try to give the more rural folk, because there was a lot more rural folk back then. A lot more people were farmers several hundred years ago than they are now. Um you would find that you wouldn't want to alienate the rural vote. You could you could almost get away with it now, depending on where you are. But back then, the rural vote was all pretty... I wouldn't say on par. It was just they were more spread out because there was more space, and the United States is big. I forgot where I was going with that particular tangent. Oh, yeah. So they gave extra votes to the more sparsely populated things so that they wouldn't feel alienated by the bigger cities. And so that the bigger cities wouldn't be able to make stupid legislations for them. Because frankly, they would. It, it, I, I live half in a city, half rural. Like I, I live in a rural community and I pretty much all my life and things like that that I do regularly is in Vancouver, which is a massive city. So I'm like torn between the two worlds. So I, under, I understand the weird poll dynamic that doesn't make the electoral college particularly good but it does explain why it was granted even though now it is more unhelpful than it is helpful at the extremes some states get one vote per low hundred thousand people and some states one vote per high hundred thousand this yeah. is how the electoral college sometimes picks a president that nationwide most citizens didn't because roughly 80 percent of the state's votes are given by population and 20 percent aren't this is on purpose. Dividing power between the levels of citizen, state, and federal is and was a central point of the Constitution. It's a compromise institution. So if you went back in time to when the states were about to finalize the deal, yelling, don't sign that document, I'm from the future. You're creating an electoral college where votes for president are distributed proportionally-ish, not perfectly proportionally. The reply would be, yes, that's one of the many compromises we agreed upon. But because of that, sometimes a president will be elected with a minority of the popular vote. Yes. But the people. The people. You can't trust the people. Do you think this compromise institution is for a direct democracy law? We're building a republic here. Yes, I know. But would you just look at this spreadsheet of proportion? How many states are there in the future? 50, maybe 51, depending on how. Wow, what a tremendous success. Go compromise institution. No, can we focus? You even own land. No. Then why would we listen to you? Goodbye. Thus, mm. the Electoral College is True. doing what it was designed to do. Originally, it was only landed white males that had the vote. Totally on purpose. Very for everyone, eh? <laughs> and the Supreme Court has reaffirmed this. All. So if you don't like Air the Electoral quotes. College, then tough noogies for you. And if you do, then nothing to worry about. The Electoral College in a fortress of axiomatic constitutionality has survived for a thousand generations of this republic. The only way to break through the front gate would be with a constitutional amendment. But getting enough states to push on the same side of that gromulent tool, while not theoretically impossible, is legislatively improbable. This is where the sneaky plan comes in. Did you forget about that? Don't worry, I got carried away. There is a back door that, if breached, can turn the constitutional fortress protecting the Electoral College into a prison. The sneaky plan is named the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. It's a terrible name, probably on purpose to hide sneakiness behind boringness as bureaucratic paperwork camouflage. But I'm calling it Napavo Interco, which is sort of not really better, but whatever. Here are the sneaky deeds. One, assume destroying the constitutional protections of the Electoral College is impossible. Point two is the note from before that states can cast their electoral college votes however they want. These are just facts, but if a state signs on the dotted line, point three is the big deal. Napavo Interco members agree to cast their electoral college votes for the candidate who gets the most votes from citizens nationwide. This is the national popular vote in Napavo Interco. The idea behind two plus three is to make it impossible to have a president most of the citizens 
didn't vote for. A state would look not only at the result in her borders, but the results nationwide and vote that way. Which is all fine and dandy if the state citizens voted with the majority anyway. But if they didn't, well, you can see a flaw with the plan. <laughs> Any singular state assaulting the Electoral College on her own, carrying votes against her own citizens, it's political suicide from without and within. So the plan, had it only three points, is something no state would agree to, requiring one last sneak. Point four, the plan does not go into effect until enough states with enough votes to control the Electoral College as a block join. So, as states sign up, the total number of Electoral College votes they control goes up, but nothing happens. Elections pass, and states still vote the traditional way, while recruiting allies to the cause. What are you guys up to over there? Oh, us? Nothing. Just chilling, just hanging out. But once a controlling majority of Electoral College votes is reached, point four is satisfied, and when it's time for the next election, charge. All together, all at once, in through the back, the- A coalition war of, all, of a sort. Reminds me of, uh... EU4, if any of you have played that, where you end up getting coalitioned by a massive group of people. <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. The Electoral College is captured, the fortress is now a prison. From this moment on, the Napavo Interco block promises the candidate who gets the most citizen votes nationwide gets their controlling majority and becomes the president. Without amending the Constitution, the Electoral College has become totally pointless by using its protection of states' rights to vote however they want into the vital tool to functionally remove state votes entirely, making the presidential election into one not of states but of citizens. And there's no problem with this plan at all, except of course the instant this popular coup occurred, states outside the compact will storm the Supreme Court, who will then be forced to deal with everyone yelling all at once about the future of how the president will be elected, which will be amazing to watch, no matter <laughs> which side the gavel of constitutional interpretation yeah, comes down that, upon. That's the plan. Thank it's God. been around for a while and has enough confirmed signatures to be more than halfway to the trigger point. And in theory, enough states have laws currently pending in their legislatures that, if passed, would put Napavo Interco into action. That would be a hell of an explosion. If they actually did that, America American politics is already a dumpster fire. Let alone trying to throw in weight of joining that, eh? Like, that, that would... Can you imagine during the 2020 election if... Napa Vote Interco actually went forward. Just the utter and complete shit show that would be unleashed. It would be horrendous and hilarious, speaking as a Canadian who would be watching the absolute mania go down. For the it would be hilarious. The next election. Though, of course, it's easier to agree to things while mm -hmm. they're far yeah, away exactly. yeah, and yeah, uncertain yeah, yeah, to yeah, happen. Yeah. And the reality of voting against your citizens, merely theoretical. So it may be much more difficult to get the final triggering 2% than the promised first 49. But the Electoral College, for it or against it, the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact is the sneaky plan to use it to subvert it. That was a good video. Granted, Super Chigre always makes very high quality videos. I could go into the different political systems I particularly like, but I think I've done that in previous videos. Probably previous CPG Grey videos also. Um, yeah, that was fantastic. That was a fantastic video. Um, if you liked his video, go like it. Go subscribe to him and all that other goes to good stuff. Go to... Do they have a Patreon? I don't remember. Yeah, go do the Patreon stuff. Go do all that other good stuff. He deserves it. Go, go listen to Hello Internet. It's amazing. Go listen to... What's the other one that he does? I can't remember. I don't actually listen to that one. Anyway, um, yeah, that was, that, it would be hilarious. It would be hilarious if that actually went forward, especially in 2020 because it's already a fucking dumpster fire. Just imagining the outer chaos. It's, it's something that shouldn't go through, but it's definitely one of those things where it's like every once in a while you just want to watch the world burn and that would definitely make the world just explode. Like that would, that would, that would. It would break everything. It'd be hilarious, but it'd break everything. Um, if you like my particular reaction to it, uh, to this video, uh, go like my video and go subscribe to my channel and everything else like that. If you have any dislikes about what I did, uh, uh, you can leave dislikes, but I'd rather comments down below so I can actually know and address and potentially deal with any particular feedback that you may leave. 
Uh, apart from that, I've been me, you've been you. Love, butts, and happiness, and all the other good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Uh, goodbye for now. Goodbye.